Westfield Middle School. This is Zachary Cliff reporting from the Cloverfield News Studio. And I'm Talia Edwards. We cover news from the city of Westfield and WMS. This episode, we are focusing on the WMS musical, video games, and food options in Westfield. So, Zach, what's your favorite restaurant? Hmm, I would say mine is probably Sonic, but just coming to Westfield sometime soon. Also, if you're a chicken lover, then you're in luck. KFC just recently opened at West Springwell Point near the new Meyer. The restaurant is currently rated at 2.4 stars with only 13 Google reviews. They have some competition coming though because the new Chick-fil-A is open, opening in April on East Tournament Trail off of State Road 32. According to the state from Chick-fil-A, it's our pleasure to confirm we will be opening a new Chick-fil-A restaurant in Westfield in spring of 2022. We look forward to joining the community in serving all of our guests delicious food in an environment of genuine hospitality. Some other not-so-new restaurants along Route 32, east of 31, that you might want to try are Portillo's or I Heart Mac and Cheese. Some other restaurants in the same area are Chipotle, Titus, Bakery and Deli, Grindstone on the Modon, Birdies, and more. Well, we had pizza for dinner here today because Domino's delivers. Yes, Westfield also has Domino's, Novo Romans, Greeks, and Jan's Pizzeria. Lots of great places to check out. It's scheduling time for next school year. The eighth graders filled their requests for, for classes a couple months ago, and now the sixth and seventh graders are making their requests for next year. Students can select full year courses like band or choir or even a world language. But this year, we are told the nine-week electives will be randomly assigned. Cloverfield News reporter Talia Edwards asked students what some of their favorite experiences were in their elective courses. What's your favorite project that you've done in an elective? Um, doing Sid the Sloth in 3D art. It's like the figure sculpture. Yeah. Um, I liked the graffiti project in art. It was really fun to do. Probably like a windmill project in auto robotics. Okay. Sculpting, SpongeBob, and 3D art. For medical detectives, we dissected a sheep brain. That was pretty fun. Probably the pottery making. Uh, the career project in CCR. Uh, the print making one. In what class? 2D art. And why did you like that? Because it was fun. <laughs> My favorite project was probably the one that we did in CCR about the like um, the job that you wanted to do because it helped me like figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, probably the like stamp carving project <laughs> in 2D art. That was probably my favorite one. Um, I liked eating food and facts. Uh, what type of food did you like making and eating? Muffins. Does facts count? Yeah. I like cooking stuff in facts. And probably the one I did in art, the graffiti one. Yeah. Um, dissecting a sheet brain. In what class? Medical detectives. What's your favorite project that you've done in an elective? <laughs> the podcast and media. I made like a mini document uh, about show choir in broadcasting. So um, I'm creating a Google site for tech apps. Um, last year we did this like um, sound of music thing for show choir, and that was really really fun. Okay. Um, I don't know what to. The Spanish, uh, the Spanish one, the Spanish survey, for me, the be countries. She said elected oh. with you. Yeah, uh, the Spanish uh, survey one. Um, I would say, I guess the food projects we do in Spanish class are pretty fun. Because I get to bake with friends and family, so I'd say that's my favorite, yeah. Okay. Um, my favorite one was in 3D art, it was the Pinch Paw. It was my favorite project that I've done. Okay. In an elective, um... Well, I had to write an essay about peer facilitation and like how I enjoyed that class, and I really enjoyed uh, writing that essay because I got I got to relive all the memories that I made in that class. Oh, the does that cooking thing count? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that cooking. Bad. No. Okay, uh, making French toast probably in facts. 
Next year, WMS will have classes in Family and Consumer Sciences, commonly known as FACTS, Art, Music, Project Lead the Way, Media, Study Skills, Tech Apps, and College and Career Readiness. If you do not sign up for a full year class, you might end up with all of them. If you sign up with two full year classes, you would not get any of them. I took choir this year and I really liked it. It is a full year class. I understand that you can still sign up for show choir, yearbook, or the announcements. These are separate applications for those three. Our last episode was in January. We took February off because probably as you know, Westfield Middle School recently presented our first drama production since COVID. Many of us were involved with the WMS musical, The Addams Family. Yes, I was an ancestor, which means the chorus ensemble for the musical. Talia, you were a part of the sound crew, and Avi Perkins was in the set club as a part, and the hair and makeup crew. We, report, we have a report on set from Haley Teague. Mrs. Trompen and the rest of the kids at Set Club work on the scenery for the musical, The Adams Family. And what do you do at Set Club? Um, basically, we just build the set of the musicals that would, they can change in and out and stuff. Set Club meets after school from 3.45 to 5.30 every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. Um, well, we have a budget from school, um, but we try to make do with what we have. The, our biggest purchase is probably the foam boards for the flats and the paint. So we'll probably buy maybe three or four gallons of paint per year. Students separate into different groups to work on different parts of the set. Um, I've been with Set Club for a few months now. It's a great opportunity to work with students outside of school in a different atmosphere than a regular class setting. They first make the cutouts of the set, sometimes reusing set pieces from past musicals. Then put the pieces back together and paint them. I had a great time with sound. It was a lot of work with 11 wireless and 11 wired microphones. We also have over 30 soundtracks. I think next time at the high school I will audition, but I'm not sure why I didn't this time. We had a few sound issues, mostly with the wireless mics, getting interference from outside sources. Perhaps we will need to upgrade before the next show. We did get a significant upgrade in the lights for this show. The Adams Family soundboard operator, Ryan Santini, brings us the next report. Well, for the last several years, our, every time we'd do a play, something would go wrong with the dimmer panel. The dimmer panel, we assume, was probably installed sometime in the 70s, and they no longer made the parts for it. It went out so much during our last production, we couldn't turn the lights on at all. So they had to take out all of the dimmers, and at that point, we knew we were going to have to replace all the lights. This is only stage one. We're renting these lights. It's slightly less than what we're going to rent for permanent, but the permanent ones aren't going to be installed until over the summer. Well, you have a 20 to 50 year difference in terms of technology, plus their LED lights, so they're going to burn a lot um, less hot. They also take up a lot less electricity. These lights are an expensive upgrade for the school, but it is something that has been needed for a number of different years. They will bring us into the 21st century, which the old ones didn't, and um, allow us everybody to be working with stuff that if they do work wanted to work at the high school or do things outside of school it would be the same equipment they would use then the cast worked from mid-december and performed three shows on march 18th and 19th friday and saturday's 7 p.m shows both sold out sound lighting and backstage crew worked for about a month before the play and set club worked for about the same amount of time as the actors there were 35 actors and 52 crew and set club members involved in the musical, resulting in a total of 87 students. They forged new friendships and grew closer as the weeks progressed. When asked about what they enjoyed most about being in the musical, 
the most common answer was the opportunity to connect with new friends. Next, as we look forward to spring break, we might want to spend a little time gaming. But first, uh, we look at some popular older video games. Then, Jen and I have made a report on some new games you may want to play. Tyrone, Jack, and I spent the last eight months at our computers playing video games with each other over Discord. Discord allows players to communicate from their own homes and computers while playing the newest video games. So I've been gaming with friends a lot, um, and the perk about having the internet and video games is you can really connect with your friends online and that helps, you know, keep friendships and make better bonds with people. Partly due to COVID-19, I've been at home a lot more, so gaming online with friends has been a massive help to me. Um, it's a great way to be social overall, and it's helped me a lot. Some of the more popular games today are Warzone, Forza, and most of all, Sea of Thieves. So my favorite part about gaming with you guys recently is probably uh, playing Sea of Thieves with you guys and, um, and getting to the Pirate Legend rank, which took a little while to get to, but, uh, you know, it was a fun grind, and I met a lot of nice people on the way. So. Players across the globe use Discord to connect to other gamers and get to join up and play games with them. Um, I've had a pl pretty pleasant experience, you know, I get to connect with people that I wouldn't usually get to all the time, you know, like nightly or whatever. Uh, so it's just like been a good way to keep in touch and have some fun with people, even if I don't see them. Nintendo Switch Sports is the long-awaited sequel to the Wii to Wii Sports in 2006. Nintendo Switch Sports isn't just a reskin of its older counterpart; it will have many different activities as well as a few of the originals. Some new sports include badminton, chambara, which is a type of sword fighting but with sticks instead of swords, soccer, and volleyball. Another thing that changed are the Mies. The Mies are now gone, and they are report replaced with sports mates. The game's Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are the Nintendo Switch remakes of the original games on the Nintendo DS. Pokemon P Diamond and Pokemon Pearl came out in 2006. Pokemon Diamond and Shining Pearl are basically 3D versions of the originals, but with a bit of extra content in there such as the Grand Underground and Romano's Park. The story and Pokemon are the same, but it's still good to see some older games get some new life. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 are the 2020 remaster of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games in 1990 and 2000. The new remaster of Tony Hawk's games is similar to how Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl were remastered. And it was just a graphic change, but it still adds many new features, such as online capabilities and community-made parks. Like the original, you can play it on updated consoles such as the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PC and Mac, Xbox One series consoles and that's it well that's all i have for today i'll see you next time thanks jack and jet for that report i bet many of you have seen the popular youtube channel watch mojo this next report by grace wild who interviews a local voice voice over artist you might recognize puppy in the vastness of his new home the multiple door options come in handy here too with all models being available. There were some great on-air uh, talents in the Quad Cities that I grew up with, Ron Evans, and a couple of others that were really awesome, too, to work with. And, you know, even listening to Rick Dees on Sunday night do his countdown. Those were the things that got me excited about going into a communications field. And so, here I am. Ryan Wild is a 20-plus-year-old veteran in communications. He has worked for several radio stations and places across the Midwest, as well as voice acting for Watch Mojo on YouTube. Over COVID, due to protocols, he created an in-home studio to record his audio for radio on Watch Mojo. Usually I come down to the studio and I, I start looking through my emails to see what kind of scripts I've got in front of me. Uh, I work for a company called Watch Mojo, who has uh, a bunch of different sub-channels. A lot of you kids may know what it is. Um, 
and that's me voicing a lot of those. Um, but uh, I do a lot of voice work for them, you know, different top 10s, tw top 20s. Um, I do some stuff for a company called Get Mojo, where we do, you know, product reviews and things like that. So when I come down, I could have anywhere from five scripts that are maybe 15 pages in total to 15 scripts that could be up to 60 pages in total that I got to read within a couple of days to get back to them so they can get them out um, and up on the YouTube page. So I come in here, crank up the computers and, and turn on all my processing equipment and I get rolling. So pretty much from beginning to end, I'm doing a lot of reading. This approach has its pros and cons as he was forced to adjust to the new setup. Business was hard over COVID with communications and media trends swinging up and down. This was a more challenging area of work to deal with, but it was a perfect storm for a lot of self-growth who wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to do otherwise. I've learned what kind of pace that I, I like to work at. I, I learned, you know, kind of the, the different tricks of the trade that I'm comfortable with. And so instead of kind of thinking about the overall of what, you know, kind of the, the crazy things that we kind of run into in, in radio and things where it's kind of cookie cutter, um, I've been able to be more creative here. And in, in turn, you know, I've, I've learned more about myself, the things that make me excited to get up every day. So um, that's been pretty cool. So I would say, yes, it has helped out 100% with self-growth. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Cloverfield News. We are looking forward to more restaurants, especially Chick-fil-A. We heard from WMS students as they look back on some of their favorite projects and their electives this year. We looked at some of the tech technical productions at the most recent WMS musical, The Addams Family. We examined some new video games we might want to play. We heard a popular voiceover artist. And that is all for this episode of Cloverfield News. We will be back in May with another episode. It's, it's a, a great, great day, day to be a, a shamrock. shamrock.